Last night, following the Democratic debate in Ohio, Jake mentioned that he believed Bernie Sanders and progressivism overall won the debate. Now, the mainstream media has a completely different view on who won. And I wanna talk about that a little bit. Politico had a piece out and the title, the headline really caught my attention. It read, quote, I'm starting not to care that she is brutal to her staff. And that was a quote in regard to one of the 20 political experts they spoke to about the debates last night. Um, and this individual is apparently a fan of Amy Klobuchar. Let me give you the exact quote, it's from Larry Sabato. Uh, he's a Politico contributor. He said, quote, Klobuchar had some smart answers. I'm starting not to care that she's brutal to her staff. Why do we care so much about that? 99.9% .9 of us will never work for her. Okay, the, look, he, he's an interesting character and he has his, uh, you know, Spots where he brings you numbers and stats and stuff that I find interesting. Um, and but he, like almost all the rest of them, have, have a bias that they're not a, that is so deep they're not aware of it. We'll get to that in a second. But that particular line is horrific. And he should have thought. Uh, I mean, that's a smart guy making a very dumb comment because you couldn't you use the same logic for Harvey Weinstein? Hey, 99.9% .9 of us didn't work for Harvey Weinstein. So what difference does it make uh, what he did to his staff? No, it makes a difference. Okay, now I'm not saying Klobuchar's Weinstein, don't get me wrong. Uh, but yeah, you should care about what kind of person they are. But but it, that's a small part of this, it's just a really bad quote. That's a, uh, the, the bigger issue is their bias. No, look, I think that that quote, it, it's not a small part of this, right? Because the message behind it is, we don't care how much the centrist Democrats po could possibly hurt the American people, Democratic voters, whatever it is. Like, I would rather have a centrist who's gonna keep things nice and comfy and cozy for me, even if they're abusive people, even if they could cause actual harm to people, because it makes me comfortable. That's what it's communicating. That's why I think it's important to mention that to you. But then they have a former House Republican Committee Council member, Sophia Nelson, and here's what she had to say. The winners were Klobuchar and Buttigieg. The centrist Midwestern candidates went after Warren with a vengeance all night. And they genuinely think that those attacks worked, that they landed. But I, I, I don't know, maybe I have a bias, but I felt like their attacks were incredibly lame. In no. fact, I'm gonna show you one of them. I'm gonna go to the Klobuchar video next. This is Amy Klobuchar from last night. And she's going after Elizabeth Warren on the issue of the wealth tax. As we all know, Elizabeth Warren wants to implement a wealth tax. And Klobuchar isn't a fan of that, take a look. Will the wealth tax work? Um, it could work, I am open to it. But I wanna give a reality check here to Elizabeth because no one on this stage wants to protect billionaires, not even the billionaire wants to protect billionaires. <laughs> uh, we just have different approaches. Your idea is not the only idea. And when I look at this, I think about Donald Trump. So let me give you a sense of what her different approaches are. And these are uh, statements that she made, Klobuchar made last night. One of the statements was, Oh, this Trump tax plan, this, these tax cuts, terrible. Uh, if I got elected, I would, I would repeal significant parts of that tax legislation. Uh, in other words, you're gonna keep most of the corporate tax yeah, cuts. Yeah, let's keep it real. Yeah, and by the way, you don't even have to agree with most. She said it, she's at least gonna keep some of the corporate tax cuts. In other words, I just have a difference of opinion with Trump that is of degree, not of kind. So Sanders and Warren are saying, no, we, we are gonna do things completely differently. Not only are we gonna restore those uh, uh, tax cuts to, or their, those tax rates to where they were, but we're gonna add taxes on top of that. So that's a legitimate difference of opinion and policy. And Klobuchar says, well, I'm not gonna do any of the taxes you're talking about. And the Trump tax cuts for the rich, well, I like some of them, but some of them is too much. Well, what? that's not a very compelling case, but that's gonna get to the heart of this issue which is who's right and who's wrong. Because they think we're biased, we think they're biased. I'm gonna make our case in a second, mm -hmm. but there's an easy way that you could find out. Well, how did they do? So we're, I'm telling you right now, and as I've said in throughout the different debates, um, I'll tell you who I, think I, who I think won. And then you'll see, as you've seen in almost every debate, and I know they'll find it unbearable, but you can go back and look at the videos, you can go back and look at the numbers, and this is important. 
and I'm gonna get to the political ramifications of this in a second, but I've been right. And so I told you Yang was gonna go to six, he did. I told you Warren was gonna rise because of policy issues, and she did. Is it about me? Not remotely. The policy matters, it matters. But the rest of the media says, no, I like Klobuchar fighting back, policy doesn't matter. Right. And so I told you that Kamala Harris would rise after she went after Biden, and she did rise. So, and I, I'm not a fan of Kamala Harris's policies overall. So we're actually objective, I tell you what's going to happen based on what actually occurred on the stage that night. So this time around, I told you last night, I think Sanders won. I thought Warren did well, I thought the progressives did great. and. And now the, all the pundits are telling you, almost all of them on Politico and on television say Klobuchar and Buttigieg won. So let's find out. So over the next couple of weeks, I think Sanders will continue to now come back and start to rise. And they think apparently Klobuchar did great, so she should rise. And I'll tell you right now, ahead of time, so you can't cry about it later and say, oh, Jenk, you're doing puffery. Okay, I'm telling you, as always, ahead of time, Klobuchar will not rise. She will not rise, she did not do well. She went on stage and told everybody, I'm not gonna give you this, I'm not gonna give you that. I'm not gonna go for big change and I'm not gonna go for hope. It's a terrible, even if you don't agree with it or you do agree with it policy wise, it's terrible politics. Yes. You remember that moment where she was doing a town hall on CNN and she said, hey, everybody look under your chairs. And that's what I'm gonna give you, nothing. I can't believe, like. And, and the pundits look at that and go, oh, giving the wow. average person oh. nothing. Way oh. to go, Klobuchar is awesome. Yeah. I get to keep all my money, all my millions of dollars, and you get nothing from Klobuchar, she's rising. Really? Because she isn't. I told you she would never get above uh, tiny, tiny numbers, and she's sitting at 2%. She's barely making it on the stage. Who was right and who was wrong? It matters, why does it matter? I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna let you get back there one second, Anna. Why does it matter? Because it's millions, potentially billions of dollars in free media that is at stake. So these guys do puffery of Klobuchar and Buttigieg, and that, so it's nonstop ads. Oh, Buttigieg was fantastic, fantastic, Klobuchar, fantastic, by uh, Sanders, terrible, terrible, terrible. Now that's an unbelievable amount of advertising uh, on the side of the establishment. Can I? And then they say, no, you're biased. No, your bias is preposterous. You, no matter how many times we prove to you that you're wrong, you will not get off of it because it isn't about being right or wrong factually. It's that you just wanna support the candidates you like because your bias is through the roof. So uh, Sophia Nelson, who I quoted earlier in regard to uh, obviously her love for uh, Klobuchar and Buttigieg, also commented on Warren and Bernie. So just to juxtapose what she had said previously, here's what she says about the progressive candidates. Warren maintained her status quo. Sanders was back considering he just suffered a heart attack a couple of weeks ago. Oh Wow, expert opinion, really, that's excellent. And that's um, as kind as they'll ever be to Bernie Sanders. And if you noticed her title, she's a Republican. Yeah. Why are we asking Republicans what they thought of Democrats? They, of course, they liked the most conservative Democrats, Klobuchar and Buttigieg. Wow, what an interesting story. Oh, Republicans, who do you think we should pick? Could you imagine Republicans doing likewise? Going, oh, Democrats, what did you think of our debates? Who do you think we should pick? And the Democrats go, oh, I think you should pick, you know, uh, Mike Huckabee. And the Republicans are like, oh, okay, let's pick Mike Huckabee. That conversation would never happen, never does happen. It's absurd, the Republicans don't give a damn what Democrats think. In fact, they'd go in the opposite direction. But yet, the politicos of the world, the mainstream media is constantly like, hey, you better do what the Republican consultants tell you to do about who you should pick as your nominee. Well, the only person who would do that is someone maniacally stupid. They're on the opposite side. Are you so biased you can't even see that? I have promoted a podcast on this show previously because I do listen to it daily. Um, which is the name of the podcast, The Daily, it's the New York Times podcast. But um, I will criticize them when it's appropriate. And today's episode of that podcast was um, terrible. And it was also titled, The Moderates Strike Back, The Fourth Democratic Debate. Well, mm. the only thing I like about that is it makes you think of the Darth Vader, <laughs> Empire Strikes Back. Well, that's true, good luck with that. Now, uh, I got news for you, it turns out your Death Star has an Achilles heel. Now, we don't have polling from the debate yet, and I'm sure that we're gonna see how the debate impacted the candidates' numbers, but we do have I'm sure Klobuchar pieces. won. I'm, I'm sure, yeah, she went from like, what, 1% if that to like. Does anybody think Klobuchar, all of the Washington thinks Klobuchar won. Does anybody think ahead of time that the polling is gonna show that Klobuchar won? 
Now, um, here's some data that we do have, right? Okay. Uh, when it comes to social media, Twitter specifically, who was tweeted about the most? Um, so if you take a look at this list, you have Joe Biden at number one, you have Elizabeth Warren at number two, Bernie Sanders at three, Kamala Harris at four, Pete Buttigieg at five, and Tulsi Gabbard at number six. Now I'm mentioning this because in the spin room, based on what uh, Ken Klippenstein, one of our reporters said, Everyone was buzzing about the establishment and centrist Democrats. And he had specifically mentioned there was a disconnect between what was going on in the spin room with mainstream media sources and what was actually happening on social media. So there's that. And then one other thing, what was the most tweeted moment? And this actually surprised me and it was a strong moment for Julian Castro. It was when he said this quote, I'm not gonna give these police officers another reason to go door to door in certain communities because police violence is also gun violence and we need to address that. Yeah, so look, I think the things that are tweeted the most is not a great indication of who won the debate. and. Uh, but the mainstream media consistently manipulates the evidence. Uh, Al Gore won uh, most of the debates against George Bush, so did John Kerry. Combined, they won five out of the six debates, but the media didn't play it that way. They said, oh, Al Gore did the sigh and the rolling of the eyes, he lost, he's terrible, etc. Oh, he takes advice from a woman on how to dress, I can't believe it, what a beta male. I mean, they went in and they did every Republican talking point. They never actually told anybody, no, Gore won the debates, including the one that he sided. They never told people that Kerry won the debates. Instead, they said he's a waffler, a flip flopper. They did every Republican talking point. And so then they turn around and say, oh, it's the liberal media, hilarious. So look guys, proof's in the pudding. Uh, the polls are gonna come out, they're gonna continue to come out, both for the debate and overall. And Globachar will not have won the debate and her numbers will not move. They paint, when Bernie Sanders hit his nadir, he was at 14%, still solidly in third. Right now, he's actually rising. Uh, and in New Hampshire, he's in a statistical tie with Warren and Biden. They're in a three-way tie, okay? Uh, and, and in the, the latest George Washington University poll, uh, nationally, Sanders has moved to number two, Biden has gotten down to number three. But when they talk about Sanders, mm -hmm. it is constantly framed as going down, going down, in really bad shape, moving down, right? Well, where's Klobuchar going? <laughs> has she moved up? Yes. Has she ever, ever, ever? So why don't they ever frame it as Klobuchar who's had a disastrous campaign? Klobuchar who's never moved up. Klobuchar who's had no momentum. Whose jokes never land during the Right, <laughs> no, they never say that. How about Buttigieg? They're like, oh, yeah, Buttigieg, could be Buttigieg, Buttigieg. Okay, so at his peak, he's at what, 5%? So, well, Bernie Sanders at his worst was triple the numbers of Buttigieg. Did a single article in the mainstream press ever frame it that way. Now those are facts, but then they will turn around and say, "Oh, you guys like progressives, so you're biased. The original thought was you're biased for Bernie Sanders because he's your uncle. Okay, I don't know why they thought we were biased for Bernie Sanders. I'll tell you why, because we're progressive. And unlike you liars, we don't cover it up. You're for the status quo and you pretend you're not. You're for the establishment candidates and you pretend you're not. That is a much more insidious bias. Whereas we are honest about our perspective. So now I like Elizabeth Warren as well. And they're like, hmm, so is she your aunt? No, because she's progressive. <laughs> so I support the progressive candidates based on their policies. But when you look at the polling and who has momentum, those are facts. And yet, as the two progressives take the lead now, mm -hmm. clearly been in the top three the whole time, now moving to the top two. Still talking about like, well, I don't know about Sanders is reeling, and oh, here comes Buttigieg at five percent, and Klobuchar at one percent. No, no, you guys are so biased you can't even see straight. Thanks for watching the Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, Jr. So those are super fun. But you also get. Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.